In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss production theory, its relationship to marginal product and average product, and I'm going to throw in a little bit of calculus for good measure. While these are independent tutorials, this is the third part of a three-part series of the playlist. And as I said, I'm going to discuss the relationships of marginal product, average product. I'm really going to focus in on the bottom curve, curves more than the top curve, so I'll start with this. So as I add labor, my average product increases. So at this first point, so I add labor like that, up that, and my average product increases. In my first point here, I have average product of labor. Now if I add additional labor, my average product of labor will increase. It goes up. And if I add more labor, what happens, we see, is average product of labor begins to fall if I add too much labor. This gives me three distinct areas. The first area is where marginal product of labor is greater than average product of labor. Often you'll see these subsets of L. I drop those in this video. In this area, the slope is positive of the average product curve, and average product is increasing. Now if I go just a little bit further, where average product equals marginal product, marginal product equals average product, the slope of the line is zero. That means average product is not changing at that point. Now the final area is where marginal product, this area here, the marginal product is less than average product. And here the slope is negative and average product is decreasing in this area. So I have three distinct areas, marginal product less than average product, marginal product equal average product, and marginal product greater than average product. So now, let me show you a little bit more. If I have L1, I want to know the slope of the average product curve. I don't want to be able to calculate it, so I need two points, L1 and L2, and it gives me two different average quantities and I want to know the change in average product. The delta means change in. That's delta. So I'm going to use a D instead of that little symbol. So I'm going to take the change in average product divided by the change in labor, which is the slope of the average product curve at any particular two points. So this is the change in average product due to a small change in labor. I'm going to focus on the left hand side of the equation first and I'm going to tell you some things we know. We know that we know that Q is equal to Q is a function of labor. We also know that marginal product is the first derivative of the total product curve or Q prime L is marginal product and average product is equal to quantity of labor divided by labor or just simply Q over L. These are equivalent. So I'm going to rewrite this over and I'll write D for delta change Q divided by L which is also equal to the change of quantity quantity is a function of labor divided by labor. No, now I think I know that the top I can treat as a function and the bottom I can treat as a function because I'm going to take the first derivative of this using the quotient rule. Now don't panic, don't run, don't hide, it's okay. I'm going to tell you how this works. So if I know k of x is equal to f of x divided by g of x, I can use the quotient rule to get the first derivative. 
the derivative of k of x is equal to, and this is a formula, g of x times the first derivative of f of x minus f of x times the first derivative of g of x divided by g of x squared. And that's just a formula, so hang in there. I'm going to tell you how this works. So g of x, g of x is just equal to l, right? So I'm going to write l over here. And the first derivative of f of x is simply q prime of l. Let's put a little prime there. Minus q of l, which is f of x. And the first derivative of g of x is simply 1. Because I'm taking it with respect to l. And I just squared g of x, which is l squared. Let me write this now. It is l. And remember what this is equal to? That's equal to marginal product. I knew you did. Minus, minus quantity as a function of labor divided by, actually times 1, I dropped that 1 though, divided by L squared. So now I'm going to focus in on the top part of this equation. I'm going to rewrite it on another slide here. Let me move that right there. Now I can factor out that L by dividing that by L. And the whole thing again is all divided by L squared. So that L and one of those L's cancels out. Now I'm going to take marginal product minus this. Do you remember what that is equal to? Anyway, divided by L. And let me put this what we know back in. So that little area is equal to average product, right? So I can rewrite this as 1 divided by L times the marginal product minus the average product. So anyway, this is equal to the first derivative of the average product curve. Let me move this over here and let me put all the pieces together for you now. All I'm really concerned about is this part of the equation. So, when marginal product is greater than average product, the first derivative is greater than zero, obviously. That makes the slope positive. When marginal product is equal to average product, the first derivative is zero, and the slope is zero. When marginal product is less than average product, the first derivative is less than zero, which makes the slope negative in that area. So we have the marginal product curve there and the average product curve. So this area of marginal product is greater than average product and the slope is positive. At this point here, marginal product equals average product and the slope is zero. And this part of the curve, marginal product is less than average product and the slope is negative. And that should do it. Hopefully you kind of grasp these ideas and these concepts of these three videos. If not, you should probably start from the first video in the playlist and work your way through.